One of the most common questions that I get is, can I ground or use my earthing mattress cover or earthing mat underneath a cotton sheet, a flannel sheet, maybe bamboo sheets, satin sheets, or this type of fabric? I'm gonna answer that question today, and the answer is, it depends. So let's dive right in and let's get started. This video will serve two purposes. First, I'm gonna show you what fabrics can be used with a grounding setup. And then second, how to do a DIY grounding setup. So some of these grounding products can be very expensive and some of you wanna dive right in, but you don't wanna spend the money. So I'm gonna teach you how to make your own, but a disclaimer, because this involves making a grounding product and that could involve getting shocked or sticking wires in the wrong places, this is instructional only and you need to do this at your own risk. So what I have here is Faraday fabric and I'll put all the links to the supplies in the description below. But Faraday fabric is basically made of polyester fabric and then also infused with copper and nickel. So it's highly conductive. I also purchased on Amazon these copper discs and also these canvas or canopy clips that will hold these in place. Because if you clip on anything to this fabric, it's kind of fragile and it could rip the fabric over time. I have also slept on this fabric for a month underneath my 100% cotton sheet and it's comfortable. It does bunch up, so you have to figure out how to secure it underneath your cotton sheet so that it doesn't bunch up and also get frayed at the ends. But there's many types of Faraday fabric and you can look on Amazon to find what fabric fits you. It's actually fairly cheap. I got this for around $30 and it's a good sized sheet that can actually cover most of my body. So what I do here is I use these copper plates and I place it onto the Faraday fabric. And then you can see here, I've also used the canopy clips to secure the copper plates in place. Then I purchased these electrodes, these 3M EKG electrodes on Amazon, and they're basically just EKG electrodes that can actually be placed onto the body. There is a metal nipple, and the earthing, the standard earthing cord will actually just clip on or snap on to the nipple itself. Attach the EKG probe to the copper plate, and then that way there's now an attachment point to the copper. But you'll have to test from time to time the conductivity between this cord and the Faraday fabric because there's gel in between the copper plate and also the EKG patch that actually can basically wear out, dry out over time. I do recommend using a standard earthing cord because it has a 100,000 ohm resistor in it. The purpose of the 100,000 ohm resistor is that if you want to ground by the outlet, that also filters out some stray electricity. And if there happens to be an electrical surge, the 100,000 ohm resistor is able to reduce the amps that flow through this cord. So for example, if it's a 120 volt system, you'll get about 1.2 milliamps, which is well below the 5.6 milliamps that could actually cause a noticeable shock that could be harmful to your body. So use an earthing cord with a 100,000 ohm resistor is highly recommended. Plus outside, if you can use a, a grounding rod, there are also ground currents that's everywhere because the power companies, if you look at the transformers, they actually ground the transformers into the earth and then basically power can be returned back to the power companies through the ground. So there's ground currents everywhere. So depending on where your house is or where things are situated in terms of your grounding rod, you can actually have significant ground currents. And so the 100,000 ohm resistor is there to be protected. So the first thing we're gonna do is use a multimeter set on ohms to see how conductive our setup is. So this is the other end of the earthing cord. I'm gonna clip a banana clip to it with a cable. I'm gonna use a Fluke 287 multimeter, which is more accurate than the Astro AI multimeter that I've been posting in the Facebook group. However, the Astro AI multimeter is adequate for your purposes and it's only like around $40. The Fluke 287 is very expensive. It's over $600. So in this end of the earthing cord, I've connected one end of the multimeter. The other end, I'm gonna test the snap here of the earthing cord. And as I touch here, you can see that it's about 99 kilo ohms. That is the resistor that's present in the little snap here. And then let's check out the conductance of my system here. So I touch the copper plate and I touch over here. So right there is five ohms, four ohms, 
let's check the EKG attachment over 200 kilo ohms. That is not good. So using an ohmmeter, you can actually test your setup this way. So I'm not gonna use the EKG patch. I'm gonna use the alligator clips and then clip onto the copper plate. And then the other end of the alligator clip, I'm gonna clip onto the earthing cord. Let's check the ohms in this setup. This is the end of the earthing cord. It's now attached to the copper plate using an alligator clip. In the middle, about 99. So this is a much better setup because there is a more direct connection. But the problem is this alligator clip is not strong enough, so you're gonna have to find maybe another alligator clip or maybe a clamp of some sort that's metal. You can use that clamp to clamp onto the copper plates on the Faraday fabric. So do not use the EKG patch. I did that also to show you and demonstrate to you how you can troubleshoot your setup to make sure that you're setting up a conductive system and not actually sabotaging your earthing and grounding. So now I'm gonna measure my body voltage on this and show you how much my body voltage drops with this DIY grounding setup. Now, I like to use the grounding rod outside. If you wanna know more, you can watch this video here and I explain why outlets can be a wild card because there can be stray currents and also dirty electricity currents in the actual ground wire of your outlets. In my outlets, I measure close to 90 microamps of stray electricity just from the outlet ground. The problem is one microamp of electricity can actually cause health problems like cancer and other issues if it gets inside your body. So if you have a break in your skin or it goes through the mucosal membranes and it gets inside your body, it's a problem. So you definitely don't wanna be grounded and sleep grounded with current running through your body. But I'm gonna use a grounding rod outside. So they'll have two grounding rods, one grounding rod for my grounding setup. And then I have a second grounding rod that's just literally next to it, about six inches away, and that's for my multimeter. So I can actually ground my multimeter to a good reference point. When I pinch the red lead on the multimeter, you can see that my body voltage goes up to over 1.5 volts AC. When I ground myself, it drops down to below 50 millivolts AC. So this is actually a very good drop in body voltage. And you notice that as I sit here and talk to you, the body voltage continues to drop because as body heat pressure on the grounding setup, as well as perspiration between my skin and the grounding setup builds up, I become more conductive or there is less resistance between the grounding setup and my skin and therefore I get better body voltage drop. So ideally you want a body voltage drop of 90 to 95%. Here, so that's about a 97% or so body voltage AC drop. Okay, so the first setup is a classic 100% cotton sheet. I'm gonna lay this over, and it's a pillowcase, so I'm gonna lay it so that there's only one layer over here. So remember, the longer my body weight is on this, as well as I perspire and also body heat, I become more conductive through this cotton sheet, and it becomes a better grounding setup. However, I'm not gonna wait here 10, 20 minutes for my perspiration and body heat to build up between me and the sheet. So therefore I'm gonna simulate that by using a damp paper towel. And I'm just gonna wipe my forearm so to simulate a little bit of perspiration. I pinch the red lead, it's over 1.7 volts AC. I get onto the grounding setup here and it drops. And you can see that it drops nicely. It goes down to under 60 millivolts. And with time, you can see that it gets lower and lower, which is well, above 95% drop in body voltage. So I bought some cloth samples and this is flannel. I'm gonna wet my arm. Pitch of lead is about 1.7 volts AC. Using flannel, it drops down to 95 millivolts AC, which is not bad. It's actually really good for flannel. So 100% flannel sheets work as well. Okay, so the next one I have is really coarse linen. Not very comfortable, I'm gonna do a double layer of linen. My body voltage now is about 1.6 volts AC. It fluctuates because the EMF environment in my house dictates how much body voltage runs in my body through capacitive coupling. So keep in mind that if I actually cut out all the power and go to the electrical panel and turn off all the power in my house, my body voltage will drop precipitously. So the body voltage measurements that I'm doing here is just a measurement of the EMF surroundings, or you can call it pollution that surrounds me in this house. 
So with the linen, let's see what happens. Even with two layers of linen, it's dropping. We're down to 290 millivolts. It's continuing to drop as my body heat builds up between my skin and the fabric. Let's see if I can get at least a 90% drop. And I can. And I bet you if I laid here all night, it would even drop some more. So even linen is actually conductive when there is some perspiration, body heat, and some weight on it. And you can use it on top of your grounding sheet or your grounding mattress cover. Okay, I'm gonna get fancy here, and this is a little 100% silk scarf. I pinched the multimeter, and here I go. The silk is also facilitating grounding when there's body heat, perspiration, and a little bit of body weight. And look at that, it dropped down nicely 65 millivolts ac and dropping so silk is a good option so i have a polyester satin fabric i pinched the red lead that's my body voltage volts ac grounding on this satin sheet this polyester satin sheet it's kind of thin but it dropped my body voltage down to well within more than 96, 97 percentile. So this sheet is actually quite thin. So you, the lesson here is that even though it's polyester synthetic, you can actually ground through it and actually ground quite effectively. So I'm teaching you how to test your grounding setup and how to use your multimeter to do that. And so really you have to do it yourself. You can't just expect that this fabric that I have here will be the same for all satin sheets because all sheets and all fabrics are made a little differently. So with a multimeter, you can get an answer uh, and without a doubt, you'll know if your grounding setup works or not. The last fabric is a good old 100% polyester sheet. So this is very synthetic. It should not ground, but let's see what happens. I pinched the red lead. That's my body voltage in volts AC. So polyester drops it by a little bit more than half, but because it's synthetic, it doesn't work very well. So this is why you have to check your sheets. Use a multimeter to check your body voltage drop using these different setups. So in summary, it's important to check your setups and you can actually do a DIY setup if you know what you're looking and how to set things up. Plus, you have to have a multimeter that can measure volts in millivolts and also amps in microamps. We're talking about body voltage, which is only one to two, maybe four volts AC. So you need a voltmeter that is sensitive enough, and I'm gonna put the voltmeter below in the description, a one that's affordable that you can actually use at home. The Fluke 287 is the most accurate, but if you don't have that type of need, then just go with the one I have in the description below. So thank you very much for joining me today. If you think that this has been helpful, please like, share, and comment, and also, comment below and let me know what future videos and types of topics you want me to cover. And remember, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss my future videos. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you.